I've got a tin of fault in our scars for today's video because for today's video, I am handling a four month old surgical scar that was handcrafted after my client had a little bit of a run in with some roller skates. So if I have her story right, my client was at the roller skating park and her right roller skate decided to go in the opposite direction that her body was going, which resulted in a bimalleolar fracture and a mesonude fracture of the proximal fibula. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to handle pretty stubborn scar tissue, really impressive internal hardware, and almost little to no range of motion. A quick check on a bruise here, which my client told me about and she said it doesn't hurt, so I just wanted to make sure. And now I'm moving on to the issue at hand. It's not easy to see, but my client's ankle is pretty thick with edema and the particular edema that she's got is extremely viscous. So I want to make sure that I move a lot of that through, so I'm pushing it up towards the popliteal lymph nodes. But because this particular edema is really thick, I'm really sinking down into the tissue to create this movement. Lymphatic drainage is a modality all in and of itself and typically done very lightly, but I'm gonna sink down and very physically move this fluid up and away from the area that I wanna work on so that I can sink down into the actual tissue. So I'm gonna take my time here, move all of this fluid up and start to create a little bit of space so that I can sink into the stuck scar tissue that is creating the problem. This video is a little different from my previous videos in that I've got a client with an actual injury or dysfunction and I'm not working theoretically. So I've done the work as I would normally in a session and I'm gonna walk you through my process as best I can. If you're interested in seeing the full length video of the work that I'm doing that includes a pre and a post assessment plus a lot more detailed explanations of the work that I'm doing, click that link in the corner and head over to my Patreon page to learn more. As I mentioned before, my client has a bimalleolar fracture, which means that both of her ankle bones, both the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus, took a hit with this injury, and there is, as a result, a lot of scar tissue on both sides, and then, of course, a lot of swelling as well. So I'm taking a moment here to be as detailed with the medial aspect of the ankle as I did with the lateral aspect. As I start to move some of this edema out of the way, I'm also sinking down and really feeling where the scar tissue is, what is affected, and talking to my client about how she's feeling and what things are popping up for her. There's a lot of information here to be processed as I'm working, so I wanna to communicate to her what I'm feeling and what I think is going on, and in turn, I want her to communicate how she's feeling, how she's reacting to the work, and of course, anything else that might show up for her. At this point, I'm taking both of my palms and working through either side of the ankle, pushing any edema that I might not have gotten with the more focused work up through the calf and into the popliteal crease, into those lymph nodes. And my bigger focus here is that I'm actually getting less focused. So with this detailed work, I often find that it's really important to come back to the whole body every once in a while and remind myself and the client that all these little bitty parts that I'm working on are not isolated and they're part of one big whole. So I wanna make sure that I reemphasize that every once in a while and keep the ankle here feeling connected to the foot and up through the leg and the knee. With an injury and a surgery like this, I wanna come down and spend some time into the attachment sites of these muscles that were thrown into the fray of all of this chaos. So I'm coming down into the bottom of the foot, and as you can see, I'm using a very specific thumb point, but I don't wanna wear out my thumb. So as I sink into the attachment sites at the bottom of the tarsals, I'm using my palm to help with that pressure and really sink in a little bit deeper, stripping down to create a separation of all this seized up connective tissue that's happening. So the muscles that come down on either side of the lower leg come down and insert right in here and I want to spend some time really opening up this part of the foot. As you can see or probably not see, there is so little range of motion with the foot here. I am sinking into the attachment sites of the peroneals and stabilizing the ankle a little bit in an effort to soften up these muscles. So I'm sinking into the attachment and pushing the foot into eversion, shortening and softening these muscles, trying to remind the ankle that it can move in this direction. There is so much scar tissue and so much hardware deep in here that movement is not gonna happen right off the bat. It's gonna take some time. But while I'm doing this work, I'm asking my client to simultaneously envision the movement that I am 
creating in this joint. I do this because with an injury this severe and this exceedingly long time frame without range of motion, that becomes the new norm. So to influence movement, not only externally, but internally as well throughout the process of rehab can be beneficial and create more range of motion in the end than what is typically seen. I'm taking the same idea and switching to dorsiflexion now away from eversion and for whatever reason I've decided to incorporate a pin in stretch with this movement so I'm using my left thumb to sink into the plantar fascia and the intrinsic muscles of the foot as I push the ball of the foot and the toes into dorsiflexion so it creates an openness in the bottom of the foot as well as movement in the ankle. At this point, I wanted to do a quick check-in with my client, so I have her bring her foot up off the table and pull her toes up towards her knee. I just wanted to make sure she was feeling okay, and so far, so good, so I'm gonna keep going. There is a distinct challenge in teaching massage therapy via video because so much of what we do involves understanding what we feel and what I'm feeling here in my client's ankle was so intense. I wish you guys could have felt it. I wish you could feel how thick this scar tissue is and how dense the muscles in her calf felt, but challenge accepted, so I'm gonna keep talking. I'm sinking in pretty deep here and I'm having her contract her calf muscles and make an effort to point her toe as much as she can. As she does that, I'm really sinking into the muscular tendinous junction of the gastrox and the soleus as it comes down into the Achilles tendon. And then when she relaxes, I'm sliding up and releasing this grip that these two muscles have on the ankle and on the lower leg in general. I'm gonna repeat this technique and while I do, I want to emphasize a couple of important points about this work. Number one, I actually just made this point, but just to re-emphasize that when I'm asking my client to do this movement, even though she can't, she is keeping those neurons firing and keeping that internal process going. And we want that for the long haul. This rehab is gonna be a lot more effective if she continues to do that. Number two, I'm having her engage this muscle and then when she relaxes it, it has to by nature relax beyond its normal state of relaxation. So once it lets go of that contraction, I'm sinking in on a very deep level and breaking up the deeper scar tissue that exists and that tighter grip that exists throughout this process. I then want to move down into the scar tissue and the incision itself and I'm using my right thumb here to sink down into this area that feels very full of rocks essentially and I'm giving the foot some passive range of motion. One might say this is my valiant attempt into a pin and stretch into an area that pins but doesn't stretch. You know how when you have a knot in a rope or a string or something and you push the ends together to soften it so that you can actually unravel that knot? This is the same thing that I'm gonna do here with the peroneals. So I'm guiding her foot into eversion here, which she's having a really hard time doing, so I'm trying as many cues as I can. I'm lifting her foot up and I'm turning her foot into eversion and I'm giving her lots of tactile cues to do this. So that when she engages the peroneals and pulls her foot out into this motion, I'm going to sink into it. And then the moment she lets go, I'm able to sink a little bit deeper into that knot and allow it to unravel and release. Anyone who has ever been in my classroom has heard me say, repetition is the key to education. I think this is true for the brain and I think it's equally as true for muscles. So I'm gonna repeat this technique again and again. And with this repetition of a technique, the client's body and the client's muscles will start to recognize it and have a little more ease with what we are asking these muscles to do. We all feel a little more comfortable with the familiar and creating a sense of familiarity with what these tissues can do is going to be helpful. So I've got my client flipped onto her back and in this position, I'm gonna repeat a lot of what I did with her prone. Um, I wanna make sure that I flush out that edema so I can start working deeply into the scar tissue that really is bothering her. During my initial assessment with this client, I was palpating some points and she was indicating that the front of the ankle was really painful for her. So I wanna take a minute and just see what she can do while she's lying on the table. So in this position, I'm gonna hold her ankle and I'm gonna ask her to dorsiflex and ask her to more specifically pull her toes up to her knees. And I'm just getting a sense of what I see firing and what she can and can't do. I know there's really limited range of motion here, but I wanna be able to see how much the muscles are firing and if there's anything that feels painful to her before I start. As I warm up her tibialis anterior and a little bit of the tibialis posterior, the anterior muscles of the lower leg, 
I'm also taking some of that edema and gently persuading it to go up towards the knee and into the popliteal crease like I did with the back of her ankle. But in this moment, I wanna talk about scar tissue a little bit more in depth. So my client is four months out of surgery, which means that she is definitely into the remodeling phase and into the reconstructive phase of her healing process. Everybody has a different healing process and every wound has a different healing process. For my client, the injury was pretty severe and she went into it as a fit and healthy individual. So her muscles are already toned and the connective tissue is what I want to realign. As I am working, I'm focusing on regaining strength in the muscle tissue and realigning the collagen fibers of the scar tissue and connective tissue around the ankle, helping it to reorganize after all of this chaos has struck. Right here, I've started to push her ankle down into plantar flexion and inversion, and that is going to ultimately lengthen out the tibialis anterior. Again, there's not a lot of range of motion with her ankle, but as I do this, I'm stretching the more superficial layers of connective tissue and then taking my thumb and sliding up the tibialis anterior. And like I was saying before, trying to realign all of this tension that comes down from the lower leg into the ankle. As I do this, I can feel a lot of the grit that the scar tissue has created and that happens because with newly injured area the scar tissue is very disorganized and like I was saying before I want to try to organize it and align it so I'm staying in long lines along the fiber direction of the muscles and trying to nicely guide them back to where they are supposed to be I'm gonna repeat this work because of you know the whole repetition thing I was talking about earlier but I'm also gonna spend some time down here really working through the edema and working down into the musculotendinous junction of the tibialis anterior into the tendon that comes down across the front of the foot. I'm focusing here for a couple of reasons. Number one, her scar is right there on the lateral side and I'm also kind of following up into the peroneals as well. So coming down the lateral aspect of the lower leg, I am addressing the musculotendinous junction because with injuries like this, a strain on where the muscle meets the tendon tends to really disorganize how the ankle functions. So I wanna make sure that I push these fibers into alignment as much as I can. I wanna start doing a little more active work on the anterior aspect of her lower leg. So I just asked her to bring her toes up towards her knee, but I wanna isolate the difference between the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum muscles, and the extensor hallucis muscles. So hallucis is gonna to go to the big toe, extensor digitorum muscles are gonna extend the second through fifth toes up towards the knee, and then the tibialis anterior is gonna bring the whole foot up into dorsiflexion. Um, I do this because I want to get the detailed isolated work between the fibers of all of these muscles in an effort to further separate what feels very stuck to me in the front of the ankle and ultimately the very crux of where she is feeling pain at the attachment sites at the top of her foot on the tarsal bones. So I'm doing this active release work that I did with her prone in each of the three areas that I'm trying to isolate. I'm going to have her bring her toes up towards her knee and then I wanna have her bring her big toe up towards her knee, isolating each of those digitorum muscles and hallucis muscles and then ultimately have her engage her entire foot into dorsiflexion. And each time she does that, I'm sinking into the different fibers of the muscles that travel along those distinct paths. So isolating out, separating out, ensuring that the muscles that form the tendons coming down to the top of the foot are starting to release that grip and helping her to find a little more mobility in her ankle. One alternative that you might wanna try with this technique is instead of having the client create a steady contraction while you're sliding up the path of the muscle, you can have them contract for two seconds and then relax for two seconds and then contract for two seconds and then relax for two seconds. And that repetition can also be equally as beneficial. Whatever you feel like is most effective and helping your client is the one you wanna choose. Or mix it up, you can do both.
I'm going to spend some time right here in the pocket of the front of the ankle in between the two tendons, one of the tibialis anterior and one of the extensor digitorum. But I want to sink in between there and gain access to the deeper attachment sites of these tendons and of the ligaments that exist right down in the front of the tarsals. So I'm taking my left thumb and sinking right in between these two tendons and using my right hand to cut my fingers underneath her ankle and allow my palm and forearm to do the dorsiflexion for me. So as I lean over her ankle dorsiflexes, I'm able to sink right in and create a little bit of friction and a little bit of space into this area. This is where my client is feeling the most stuck and the most pain. So I wanna hang out in here and create a little space and try to do some deeper work. I'm gonna smooth things over and make nice here really quickly because I'm about to dive in a little bit deeper and I don't want all of this to be too aggressive. Um, so as I sink in again, I'm really staying in hyper communication with my client. I know you can't see the conversation or hear the conversation that we're having, but I wanna make sure that she is within a good tolerance here of level of pain or discomfort um, and that things feel productive and not irritated or negative in any way. The thin line between therapeutic and painful can be crossed really fast, so as I'm doing this work, I'm sinking in a little bit deeper into the attachment sites, and I'm starting to create some friction and opening up the ankle joint as much as I can. This is really difficult, there's a lot of scar tissue, there's a lot of hardware in there, but I want to sink as far as I can, create friction, create movement, and stay within her pain tolerance. I've done this specific technique three times now, once kind of from the side with my thumb and once from the base of the foot with my thumb and now with my fingers. And I'm using all three to try to access these different levels. Sometimes when I move my own body mechanics, the client feels a different sensation. So I like to have varied ways that I work so that my client feels the difference and starts to feel a change as much as she can. I want to start to do some work into the Golgi tendon organ of the flexor hallucis muscle, which sounds so fancy when I say it like that, but really all I'm trying to do is sink into the tendon of the muscle that pulls the big toe up towards the knee. And as my client is firing that muscle, a little spindle within that tendon is responsible for the proprioception of what is going on in this area. So as she fires this muscle and I sink in, I'm starting to wake that proprioception back up in an effort to get that brain muscle communication back to working status. I'm repeating the same technique with the flexor digitorum muscle because, you know, repetition, and I'm having her fire toes two through five so all of her toes except for her big toe and as she does that i'm sinking into that golgi tendon organ waking up the spindle waking up the proprioception and giving her foot a little more awareness and then i think it's helpful sometimes to after she contracts it just give a nice stretch to that muscle as i work it through and start to draw nice elongating strips up through the fibers of this muscle making sure everything is falling back into alignment For this session, as with so many sessions where I'm really focused on the feet and the ankle, the icing on the cake is gonna be taking my palms and shaking the foot back and forth, inversion, eversion, repeat, 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 and just jostling through and opening up all of this new freedom that this tissue has found. As a quick side note, my client literally sighed in relief in this last moment.